Hello, good day. My name is Ying and I am a doctor. Welcome to your lecture series on familiar diseases. Today, your class will be on the common cold. Today's lesson plan is here. We will be covering what the common cold is, what the causes of the common cold are, some possible vaccinations for things like the flu, as well as how it is possible for this condition to become serious, as well as how it can be treated. So the common cold is sometimes incorrectly referred to as the flu, but it is an upper respiratory tract infection uh, caused usually by a virus. So here we have a diagram of the mouth, the nose and the lungs. From this section above, you have the upper respiratory tract and below this, you have the lower respiratory tract. So a common cold and the flu both affect only this area, the upper respiratory tract. Now the origins of the, f of the term the common cold seem to come from the fact that people tend to catch a cold during the colder months when the seasons turn from fall to winter. It is the most common illness in developed countries and it is usually self-limiting. What this means is that the body will naturally, on its own, successfully fight the infection without having to see a doctor or without you having to take any medication. However, sometimes complications can occur. These include ear infections, asthma attacks, which are caused by the symptoms of a cold, as well as sinusitis, which is inflammation of the sinuses over here. So rarely, the body can become weak from fighting a cold because you have an infection. And because the body is weak, you can get another infection on top of your cold. This is called a secondary infection in medicine. In some populations or groups of people, it is possible for the common cold to become much more serious. For example, in very young children and the elderly population, these people are most susceptible to developing more serious infections. In these populations, it is very important to monitor the symptoms carefully. If they become more severe, or if the symptoms last longer than 10 days, which is usually how long a cold will last, it is important to see a doctor as soon as you can. So what causes the common cold? The main cause of a common cold is a virus. So viruses come in many shapes and many forms, but the most common cause for the cold is the rhinovirus. RV. Okay. How the virus is transmitted from person to person is through contact. In winter, the temperatures are lower and the air is drier, making people more likely to stay indoors. They are more likely to take the train and subway rather than to walk or cycle outside. If you were on the commuter train and the person standing in front of you, facing you, sneezes on your face, and that person has a cold, you are probably also going to get a cold too, if he has one. So other common viruses which can cause the cold are here, the adenovirus, the coronavirus, and this one is important, the influenza virus. So it is the influenza virus which causes the flu, and it is for this that we have vaccinations. After you come into contact with the virus, such as the rhinovirus, which is the main cause of the common cold, you will not develop the symptoms immediately. They take about three days after you are exposed to the virus to develop. This delay in exposure is also known as the incubation period in medicine, and it is not only used for viruses, but also other infections, such as bacterial infections or parasite infections. If you have a cold, the symptoms you are most likely to have are a blocked or a running nose, sneezing, coughing, a sore throat, aching muscles and joints, a fever, or a general feeling of being ill. 
In medicine, we call this general feeling of not being well, malaise. So what is the flu then in that case? So the flu is specifically an infection caused by an influenza virus. The symptoms of a flu are usually a lot more severe than that for the common cold. Although the flu, like a cold, is also self-limiting, sometimes a patient can feel so unwell that they are unable to carry out their normal daily activities. This might mean that they are unable to go to school or to go to work. Groups at high risk for developing complications of the flu are people such as pregnant women, the elderly population, people who are known to have a weak immune system, as well as people who work in a healthcare setting, such as doctors and nurses. These are the people who are advised to have the flu vaccine or a vaccination every year. The flu vaccine is different from other vaccinations which we have for other diseases because the vaccination changes every year. It is updated depending on the influenza virus, which research shows will be the most common for the coming season. It is important to note that while the vaccine will be able to cover the most common types of the influenza virus, which will cause the flu, it is not able to cover all the different types of influenza viruses, which can cause the flu. So how is the common cold then normally treated? Unlike bacterial infections, where sometimes you are given antibiotics for antibiotics, For viral illnesses, illnesses which are caused by a virus, we do not usually have specific medication to treat them. Normally, we just treat the symptoms. For example, if you have a running nose, we will give you medicine for a running nose. If you have a fever, you may take fever medication. And if you have a blocked nose, you may take decongestants. In different parts of the world, there are also common beliefs or practices which are used to treat a cold. France, for example, has a very interesting practice. People believe that if you drink warm wine, that will help you relieve the symptoms of a cold. In Japan, if you eat small oranges, that is also believed to help symptoms of a cold or a sore throat. In parts of southern China or Southeast Asia, sometimes drinking a very thick syrup made from biwa and other herbs diluted with warm water is actually part of Chinese herbal medication which is used. It's known as kampo in Japanese. Ginger is also used widely in Chinese households during the colder months as it can promote blood circulation and is also believed to warm the body. In Hindu Indian households, people believe that drinking turmeric can ease colds as well as headaches, whereas some Spanish and Mexican households believe that drinking garlic tea can help to ease a cold. One practice that is common throughout the world is advising people who have symptoms of a cold to keep warm and to drink warm fluids and to rest as much as possible.